As the fourth and final lesson on uh, instrumental variables, uh, we will then consider the Hausmann test, which is a useful specification test in the context of instrumental variables, but we will also later utilize it in the context of panel data. So, um, what's the Hausmann test about? Uh, uh, to clarify, it's also in the literature known as the durbin wu Hausmann test, uh, but for example, uh, in Stata, this uh, there is command Hausmann to do it. So, so I believe that this is uh, uh, partly related to the to the disciplinary boundaries because Hausmann is uh, economist, so in econometrics, then then very often we refer to it as a Hausmann test, whereas Durbin and Wu were statisticians, uh, and uh, it may be also that the tests were uh, originally proposed in slightly different contexts, but uh, but it was later then realized that that, that uh, these uh, approaches are actually uh, very much the same. Okay, so what's the rationale of the of the of the test? So it's not always uh, entirely clear that if endogeneity is a problem or not. Uh, so uh, remember this uh, electricity distribution firm example in the previous lesson, we found that uh, there was very dramatic change when we we applied the instrumental variables. So uh, in theory, if uh, it happens to be that this uh, our exogeneity assumption holds. So in fact, uh, our our x variable is uh, exogenous. Then uh, we know from from this uh, Gauss-Markov theorem that uh, that OLS is the best uh, linear unbiased estimator. In other words, OLS is uh, unbiased and efficient. Uh, and if the if the basic assumptions of the ordinary least squares apply, then uh, the instrumental variable estimator would also be still unbiased but uh, less efficient. So, so there is a, um, some cost of using instruments unnecessarily if, they're, if, they're, if they are not necessary, then, then uh, um, if the classic assumptions of OLS hold, then, then uh, OLS is the best estimate that there can be. However, then if the exogeneity assumption is violated, so if we do have an endogeneity problem, then uh, OLS estimator would be biased and inconsistent whereas the instrumental estimator remains unbiased. So in that sense, it could be then useful to test statistically that uh, is there an endogeneity problem to begin with or not? So that would then give the rise, should we, uh, that would indicate then that uh, should we use this uh, classic OLS or should we rely on the instrumental variable estimator? And uh, since it's uh, uh, relatively quick and uh, inexpensive nowadays to run both estimators, so so then we can run both and then, then use the Hausmann test to, to make the decision that which one to rely on. So that's the basic idea. So uh, the null hypothesis in the Hausmann test, uh, if we apply it in the context of the instrumental variables, is that uh, the OLS estimator is preferred. In other words, the null hypothesis that we are uh, testing is that the covariance of X and Epsilon is equal to zero. And alternative hypothesis that there is some correlation between X and the error term epsilon. In that case, then instrumental variable of estimator would be preferred. So, like I already mentioned, we, we estimate both OLS and IV models, and then the test is based on the comparison of the of the estimated coefficients with these two alternative estimators, and also particularly their standard errors. So, intuitively. If the null hypothesis holds and both estimators are consistent, then uh, the difference uh, of this, uh, these coefficients or the absolute value should be relatively small. And so in, in that sense, if, if the null hypothesis is true, we don't expect to see very large difference in these two estimators. Of course, because the IV estimator is less efficient, there's, uh, there is some, some difference. But in a sense, the Hausmann test is uh, based on the idea that we are testing that is this the difference between OLS and uh, instrumental variables estimators so large that it is just uh, cannot be just due to the inefficiency of the IV estimator? It must be due to the endogeneity. Okay, so uh, there is a, the test statistic is called a Hausmann statistic and it has the uh, chi squared distribution. If the null hypothesis is true, so then we can calculate this. Uh, test statistic and see 
is it uh, small enough to, to maintain the null hypothesis or is it so large that if the null hypothesis is true, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, very unlikely that the test statistic would be so, so large. So in that case, we would then reject the null hypothesis and uh, choose in favor of the instrumental variable estimator. So uh, it's most convenient to do this uh, this uh, Hausmann test in, in Stata. It's possible to do it also, I believe, in, in uh, Excel, but then you need to manually calculate the test statistic. So I have here done it in the, in the case of the uh, electricity distribution example in, the, in, um, in Stata. So the idea is that we, uh, whatever software we use, we need to run both the IB regression and the OLS regression and uh, then we need to compare uh, the, the results. And here are some, some tips for, for doing it in Stata. So you need to, need to save the results, uh, so-called estimate store. So here's then the, the results of this Hausmann test in, in, in Stata. And uh, here are the uh, coefficients of the, of the final uh, production function model. So there is OLS results and the IV results. So, so uh, notice that these coefficients uh, uh, in the left part of the table, so, so this lowercase b and capital B, capital B results are the OLS results and lowercase b are the instrumental variable results. So both sets of coefficients we have seen already before in the, in the previous lesson. Okay, so those were presented. So I had just uh, then then uh, with this Hausmann command, we then compare the if 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 the if the difference in the coefficients is statistically significant or not. So in the third column, there is simply the difference. You can verify that it's just the b minus lowercase b minus capital B, and then uh, Stata computes then the the standard errors for those those, uh, and uh, you will see that. Uh, that uh, it's also indicated that uh, that uh, the null hypothesis is that uh, the difference in coefficients is uh, not systematic, and the this uh, G two that's the test statistic. So the uh, Hausmann test statistic is uh, value of that is equal to twenty one point twenty four, and you can see also the uh, formula for that. Uh, that's in matrix notation though, and. Uh, this uh, value of 21.24 should be then compared to the to the uh, to the table of the g squared distribution, or, or you can find the critical value in Excel. But Stata also gives this uh, p value automatically. So this uh, prop greater than g2 that is is the p value of the Hausmann test. Okay. So this p value you read similar to the other p values that we have considered before. So, uh, so in this case, it's 0 0.000. So it means that uh, that uh, uh, we can reject the null hypothesis at the one percent significance level, or five percent significance, or in, in fact, in any any positive significance level, we can reject the null hypothesis. And indeed, uh, intuitively, the difference in the coefficients is very very large. So it's it's uh, it's too large to be attributed just to the inefficiency of the of the IV estimator. So in this case, we would then conclude that uh, that uh, that uh, there is indeed endogeneity problem in the OLS estimators. We reject the null hypothesis that uh, that uh, x and epsilon are uncorrelated, and we we would then choose in favor of the instrumental variable estimator. Okay, that's the that's the interpretation of the of the test result. So then, of course, there is the there is then. Uh, it's not uh, that this uh, this uh, instrumental variable approach is free of assumptions. So we have here taken as a as a as a given that uh, that this instrumental variable estimator is consistent under the null hypothesis. So this relies still on the assumption that uh, the instrument is uncorrelated with the error term. If that is not true, then of course uh, the IV estimator can be also inconsistent, and the Hausmann test doesn't also lead to the correct test result. So if there is some kind of suspicion that uh, that perhaps the instrument is also also uh, also uh, endogenous then then we cannot so we, we really have to be sure that the instrument itself is uh, exogenous. 
So that's that's the interpretation of the of the Hausmann test uh, that can be convenient for testing if this uh, if if you can be sure on that the instrument is exogenous. So as the next theme, then we will consider the other two two violations of the classical Gauss-Markov assumptions, namely heteroscedasticity and uh, autocorrelation. And autocorrelation is also then paving the way towards the time series models, which will be the 10th theme of the course. Thanks for your attention, and then we continue with the heteroscedasticity.